Hello, hello! And welcome back as I ring the bell for last call and get ready to put a little bit of boot to some squishy alien stragglers in Perfidious Pete plays Stellaris. Open all the doors, aliens. I'm letting you out into the galaxy here. It's closing time in the Petarian Empire, and I'm turning all of the lights on over every boy and every girl. It's closing time. One last call for not being slaves. So finish your whiskey or beer, because it's closing time. You don't, you know, aliens don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Or rather, I mean, I suppose you can stay here. It's just specifically, if you're staying here, you're going to be doing it down in a salt mine, breaking rocks for the rest of your life until the overseers finally work you to death. Because, hey, <laughs> like Minneapolis Rockers Semi-Sonic taught us all back in 1998, every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. And this little army I'm putting together here, this little transport fleet, this baby represents the end of your freedom and the beginning of my transition from Interstellar Emperor to Interstellar Overlord. You know, the weird thing actually about that Semisonic song is that song actually isn't even about, like, closing time and drinking and having fun and whatnot. Or rather, it sort of is. The lead singer of Semisonic actually wrote that song about the birth of his first child, which... If you know that and go listen to that song, gives it a really kind of vastly much more sinister sort of appeal. Think about it. Think about it. He's effectively what that song says, saying if you know it's about the birth of his first child, he's like, well, all of my fun is over and ruined forever. This kid has come and it's time for me to put away childish things. I, I, it's closing time. We got to finish that whiskey or beer. No more drinking for me. That really sucks. And the thing that I wonder about is, do you think that he told his kid that that song was about him? Build mining. I can't build mining stations around any planets. Why not? I mean, I can I can definitely do that, right? Build mining station. Oh, no, because I don't have... Okay, got enough, not enough minerals, right? Question then is, did do you think Dan Wilson actually told his kid that song was about him? Because that kid would be like 20 now. And doesn't... Knowing that your dad's career effectively was entirely founded on one song that he wrote about you and how you fucking ruined his life simply by being born it really seems like that's the kind of shit that would fuck you up like that would really warp you as as a person oh we could just tell it to build all huh that's interesting i was unaware that that functionality existed apparently we can tell it to do we'd be like hey go build all of the stations at once I can see that being really useful long term, but we're still sort of doing this piecemeal one at a time. I like that functionality that I can just click on a system and say, hey, just upgrade all of it. Just these things. Yeah, give me all of the things. That's pretty cool, actually. Also, the other thing that's pretty cool is the fact that we still need to be building more armies. I have no idea how many armies we're going to need to successfully conquer Damium. Let's take a look at, you know what, let's use Earth as a baseline here. And by the way, Dan Wilson, don't don't think I forgot about what you did to your kid. You know what? I, gu I guarantee Dan Wilson's children fucking hate him. I they would be like, man, the guy for the last fucking 20 years has been singing a song about how I ruined his life. And I had no choice in the matter. He's like, oh, you ruined my life. I wrote a song about it. All my fun days are now behind me. Every new beginning comes from a, some other beginnings in. The end of my days is a cool rock star out running around just playing bars in Minneapolis. It's all over because now I got a stinking kid. I didn't ask for that, Dad. I'm not the one who got Mom pregnant. That's on you. Don't blame that shit on me, Dad. Then he just picks up his guitar and, like, smashes his dad's studio. I completely forgot my train of thought now. Oh, plan summary, right. So, I was well, what I was saying is we're going to use Earth as a baseline. So, our planet has five defense armies garrisoned. And considering the fact that we're going to go invade a civilization of, like, rock-banging losers who maybe have, like, they're in machine age technology, I believe. Is that correct? Let's take a look at your species list. So, the Gravidox you have. Can we not, like, take a look at you? Go to you. You're like a machine age civilization, I believe. Is there? Can we? Oh, here we go. They're a primitive kill civilization. So, machine age. Latter part of the industrial age, factories, mass-produced goods and vehicles, air travel is becoming commonplace. So they have, like, guns, planes, rockets. Well, maybe not rockets, because it doesn't say space travel is becoming commonplace. It says air travel. So we're looking at, like, 
a World War II era sort of civilization. We are an interstellar empire, which means we've got to have like way better guns and shit. We've got fusion bombs and well, I mean, at the minimum, we've got fusion bombs and nuclear missiles. We should be able to kick the shit out of this civilization. So I'm going to assume that if Earth starts with five, let's just say that all other races probably have a garrison of a similar size. And I think one on one, my armies are going to be able to take their army. So my goal, I'm going to build five fleets as well. And we're just going to go at them five on five. We'll be like, hey, come on, 1v1 me, bro. Batherian power plant is freaking beautiful. We want new research. I was worried about what research I needed to build a transport fleet, but it turns out the transport fleet mechanic is actually perfectly... This credit to Paradox, man. They really know their grand strategy games. They know how to make the game about the strategy and less about the tedious micromanagement. And then I'd like to say, hey, Pavonis, take a page from the book of Paradox. They're doing it right. They made it as minimally tedious as possible. Like, hey, when you build an army, you can just put it on a ship and take it wherever you want it to go. The army cost is based on how much the ship you put them in is cost, and building one also builds the other. That's inspired, really. I want level 3 ships. I want destroyers. Plasma thrusters would speed us up. That's intriguing. Um, afterburners is also intriguing, but a, a ways down the way. We could go for some quick army damage and bonus minerals. We are going to be needing army damage in... You know what? Give me powered exoskeletons. We need the army damage because we're going to be using it, but 5% more minerals is... I mean, 5% more minerals is 5% more minerals. You, if you're getting 100 minerals a turn, that's instead 105 minerals. I mean, it ain't rocket science. It's a flat bonus. We're going to be getting about an extra 2.5 minerals a turn out of that. Why not? The army damage is useful. Also, plus, it's, it's easy to research. We're going to get that done very quickly. What do we got? I lied. 22 months. It's actually more than a year for us to finish that, and we will definitely have invaded this planet by the time that's going to be useful at all. We could switch, but you know what? Early investments, percentage bonuses, scale. The, the earlier you get them, the more use you're going to get out of it. That's how they That's how they scale that way. Big little bonuses early, long term, stack up. Also, why is the Stevedore not doing anything? Steve, you should... Uh, be investigating some well really what we need to do is get our mineral we've got the power thing sorted we had uh, uh, like a not a surfeit of power earlier because we were still working on colonizing st peter's we are probably going to build another colony ship shortly but even so if we still take that eight power for colony maintenance out we're still at a bonus of plus six and i want to start having well i want to get more minerals one but another thing too is i also want to start capitalizing on some of our more outstanding research opportunities I mean, Beetlejuice is just begging for additional development. Stevedore, where are you at? You're in, you're actually in Beetlejuice. I never under, I never know how to pronounce this. Is it, it I know it, it's either Beetle Guys or Beetlejuice. Just say, for me, the Beetlejuice thing is ruined forever because of Michael Keaton. Like, I can't say Beetlejuice now without thinking about him and a bunch of white face makeup and Gina Davis running around trying to be ghosts and scaring Winona Ryder. When I say Beetlejuice, I'll just be like, I want to say it two more times and see if he appears. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And then my own personal demonic minion comes forth to do my bidding. What the hell was Beetlejuice's motivation in that movie anyway? Why was he, why was he, why did he do what Winona Ryder asked him to do? What was, what was his motivation there? Did, wasn't he, like, in love with Winona Ryder's character? And he, like, was trying to ghost bone her? Or he wanted her to die so she could be a ghost and then they could ghost bone? Man, that movie's real creepy. So on this planet, I think what we're going to do, before we build anything else, we should be building a Batharian power plant. Why can we not do that? Do we need a basic power plant first? This has Batharian stone. Local resources allow for the construction of powerful buildings on the tiles where they are present. Do we we finished that research though? Did we not? Fusion power. Yes, we definitely finished the Batharian power plant. That's what we just finished. Correct. Batharian refinery unlocks the Batharian power plant. So how come I can't build it? Vast amounts of energy credits. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to take advantage of the vast amounts of energy credits. You said vast amounts, and I'm like, yeah, I'm on board. 
Where's my Batharian power pl Oh, it, okay. I can build it. It's right there. I just don't have enough minerals, so we gotta wait. Pete, are you gonna build a Batharian power plant right now? Yes, I am, because that allows our construction ships to focus almost exclusively on mineral rights for the foreseeable future. And we're finding some really good mineral resources out here. This part of the galaxy is mineral rich, baby. Also, we're gonna need to build... We're gonna need to build another wormhole generator, because this part of the galaxy seems spread out and away from everything else. So also potentially uninhabited and also potentially a good source of additional resources for us. I don't think you are outside. Yeah, okay. This is outside of our reach. Haramoth has been fully surveyed. We've got two tiny little stars here that aren't technically in our area of influence yet, but maybe soon joining it. We should probably just have, you know what? No, we, we're going to have you go do this. There's a special project here. Oh, right. You can't do it because you're not level five yet. I keep forgetting. That one's a hard one. All right. Well, just come survey this system then. You got to get to level five somehow, Woo. Go survey the system. And worst case scenario, we can just bring our science ships home and have them give us 10% extra science because one of the things they can do is contribute to our research. Um, tradition. Oh, hell yeah. We got enough to unlock a new tradition, baby. I love tradition. Oh, also, what is this? Strategic resources. Ah, right. Okay, we don't have any. Well, that's fine. We don't really need any at the moment. So, tradition cost caused by the number of colonies is reduced by 33%. Intriguing. A new life. Population growth speed increased by 10%. Colony development speed increased by 50%. That's good. Galactic ambition. I really like lowering the cost of our frontier outposts. Like, quite a bit. Who are your network? We'll tie our far-flung colonies more closely together. The effect of an increased tradition cost caused by the number of colonies is reduced by 33%. So let's take a look at how we're actually... Like, how does that penalty apply? We're gaining 5.6 per month. Get an extra 12% from me, Philosopher King Perfidious P. We can increase our output by building auto Cathon monuments or other unity buildings. So what does this penalty... Tradition cause caused by the number of colonies. So the more colonies we have, the more difficult it becomes for us to gain traditions. Intriguing. We don't really need galactic ambition just yet. And we don't really have a colony. I do like 10% population growth speed. That's pretty good. I think maybe we'll take the courier network. Because the courier network should mean our next one of these is actually 33% cheaper. Earth finished its surface construction. Yeah, I'm just, I'm waiting for enough minerals to build that Batharian power plant, though. That's really the next thing on my list. And also, it's why our infrastructure got to go up. Why we got to start getting more minerals per turn here. We've come through our power difficulties we've broke on through to the other side like a, a song by jim morrison now it's time now it's time for us to do the work so build you build a batharian power plant still can't build it requires planetary administration on the planet pretty sure we have one do we do we not Oh, we can't. Um, upgrade to planetary. Oh, well then, I see. So we don't have a planetary administration building on either of these planets, then, do we? We just got. No, oh, we just got the dump reassembled. Okay, well, so the Batharian power plant is an even longer term investment than I thought because we got to do some upgrades. I do want the Batharian power plant, but you know what? We can't have our construction ships just being idle. I would rather go for minerals now. And then we can we can always kick the Batharian power plant online once we actually need it. Yep, I'm going with that route instead. So what are we going to do? We're going to build two more assault armies. We'll use those minerals in other places while our construction ships finish. And then when they're finished, we'll have them go immediately back into building more mines. I'm aware that I just spent some minerals that I could be using to build into mines. Also... I'd say we could build another construction ship to help us out, but I d in the early game, I don't really like building more than two construction or science ships because if you have a third one, 
A lot of the time, they just wind up sitting idle while you're waiting for minerals to arrive. Because we have two right now, and our mineral input is not currently sufficient to keep both of those guys working 100% of the time. One of them doesn't, one doesn't feel like enough, but three feels like too many. Two just seems to be like a nice, happy medium. So, you're surveying. You still have an opportunity here. Yeah. Okay, so three minerals there. Why don't you come down? We got two sources for two more. All right, build a mining station. And the Goib new. you need minerals. We're just going to have you build minerals in the system that you're in. We got one, two out here. That's it. Might as well have you move over there. Go orbit that, please. Oh, hello. Hold on a second. Did you find yourself an anomaly, Sanchez? More importantly, did you find an anomaly you can't fuck up? Call me crazy. I guess we'll just have the trailblazer go ahead and research that shit. Sanchez, I'm... I doubted my knuckle collecting for failure policy. I admittedly, early on, I doubted myself. Also, we should not have flown over here because we had minerals right there. We could have just thrown a mine on. I doubted my policy early. I'm not going to lie. I doubted it. I was like, I don't think the knuckle collecting policy, I, I really feel like maybe it's going to inhibit innovation. But since we instituted the you fuck it up, it cost you a knuckle policy, there haven't really been a lot of fuck ups. We get 122 engineering research from that. Shattered remnants for cruiser inside a starship can be detecting the decaying orbit deep inside the atmosphere of Rothier 4. It appears to have ventured far into the gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer, only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided us with some interesting engineering data. I'll take free research. That puts us like a quarter of the way towards what we were researching. And you should probably just go ahead and build a mining station. What are we going to have the Trailblazer do now? It's uh, Alexander wept for he had no more worlds to conquer territory here in that we're, uh, we're, out, of, we're out of shit to, to scan. Unless we want to invade enemy space, which we can't do because we have closed borders with that nation. Like, this is the last trail to be blazed right here. Until we build another wormhole generator, that's it. We're, we're out of space. So, I'm thinking... Sanchez, you're about to get a much-deserved vacation. You're going to come home and assist our research, I guess. Until one of you gets to level five. Infrastructure continues to go. We're doing well. Army recruitment has finished. Okay, we did it. So we have... Actually, we, you know what? I lied. I said we were going to 1v1 them, bro, but it looks like we built one too many assault armies. I'm not going to be salty about the fact that we built one too many assault armies. I'm actually going to be shockingly comfortable with the fact that we built one too many assault armies. And in the meantime, by the way, a spaceport, you should be kicking out some clam crushers here. Because remember, crushing the clams is still on a freaking agenda, by the way. Don't think, Bacturum, that just because I haven't been talking about you, that I forgot about you. Because I assure you, I have not forgotten. No, no, no. I'm like those bumper stickers on the cars that you see everywhere. Gone but not forgotten. Bacturum Empire Campaign of Destruction. Born 2017 to still going strong 2017. Probably has some angel wings on the sticker as well. Put it on the back glass of my car. That way everybody knows that you know somebody I love died at one point. Even though that's true for pretty much most people. Build a mining station. More mines. It's more mines. Plus, think about this, guys. We've, we're have we about to get a gigantic influx of, I don't want to call them slave species, but sometimes you got to call a spade a spade. We're about to have a giant influx of slave species. You know what? Let's just say the Empire is about to enjoy a surfeit of abundant and inexpensive labor. We got to have a place to put them to work at. Another ship is built. Fantastic. Up to 16. We are close to our naval capacity. We need two more Corvettes, and we have hit the mark. Two more Corvettes, and it's done, y'all. We good. I'm stoked about that. I want to be good. I want to be home. Goib New built another mining station. Well, Goib New, you know what you can do now that you built another? Well, you're going to have to wait a month. You're going to have to wait 14 days to build another one. I'm waiting for my transport fleet to arrive, and in the meantime... 
Let's go scare the holy living shit out of these guys before we invade them. What do you say? Let's just, uh... Yeah. Go, uh... Horrible bombardment. Bombarding a hostile planet will turn its controller hostile against us. Should we go bombard this pathetic species? Do we need to bombard them? I mean, what do they got on the surface? Wait. This is definitely not the right planet. They don't have any buildings, so there's nothing we could do other than kill potential slaves. I'm not sure why we would want to bomb them at all. Really, what I'd like to do is just enter orbit. Can you guys just go over there and orbit for a minute? I don't want to murder potential slave people. I mean, that just seems mean. Also, it doesn't seem just mean. It seems kind of foolish. Why should I murder them when I can, as previously mentioned, clap them in irons and throw them down into mines? So the first strike force. Let's take a look at the bombardment here. Bombarding a non-hostile planet will control... Again, I don't care. Yeah, bombard it. So you are doing bombardment... Attack now. Okay, so where are our bombardment options? That's what we want to take a look at. Got 15 ships and some bombardment. Move order. Can we change your bombardment instructions? Yes. Fleet stance. Ground support. Ground support stance is light. Light stance will cause 30% damage to the planet's fortification these days multiplied by the supporting fleet's size. Defending armies will not regenerate health. Good enough. Oh, well, what are their other options? Ground support stands to limited. Limited stance will cause 40% damage to the plant's fortification that you did multiply by the supporting fleet size. Pops are unable to work. 2% chance each month that a pop is killed. 5% chance each month that a building is ruined. They don't have... Yeah, this is fine. Let's, let's just start bombing the shit out of them. I mean, they don't really have anything we're too terrifically worried about, honestly. Let's let's go ahead and, and do whatever we can. I'm not... I don't care that there's a 2% chance that we're accidentally going to kill one of their citizens. Let's give them two months of savage space bombing, then we're going to invade. Let's uh, kick the time down. I want to slow things down. Slow things down just a little bit here for Perfidious P. Energy storage capacity. We got our fusion reactors online. Fantastic synchronized defenses. Makes our stations better. We will get that ultimately. Planet fortification improved deflectors. I like. Solar panel network is interesting. I really want. Okay, we're going to do red lasers. Pete, why are you doing red lasers? I think we've got some. I want more offensive technology, but it feels like it's gated behind the fact that we have one as yet unresearched offensive technology. So I'm going to spend 20 months and just try to get that out of the road. We could build robots. Buildable population. I like. You know what I like more than buildable population? Antimatter missiles. Yeah, I want to I want to shoot missiles made of antimatter at people. We're going to do that. Pete, that's a long build. That's that's deep. If you go look at the research, that's 53 months. It is. You're right. It's 53 months. But we have some sources of potential engineering research here that we're going to start harvesting. Like, for instance, when we conquer this planet, we'll just get three for free. Well, not free, but we're going to get a source of three. And potentially we could pick up another three from Ankadir. So little bits. That's one thing I like about Stellaris, too, is it's not one of those games where you run into like a JRPG where you have to you start out hitting people for like a thousand. And then by the end of the game, you'll be like 1.4 million damage a swing. And, eh, Stellaris doesn't work like that. It starts with lower numbers. At the beginning of the game, you're like, I have five research per turn coming in. So when you add two, it's actually a significant addition. It makes a difference. By the way, February 1st, Aliens is going to be the day your civilization ceases to exist. So Goibnu is still giving us more minerals. And I mean, hey, are you in our borders? <gasps> you are in our borders. Why are we not harvesting you? We should, we should be harvesting you. So, um, build mining stations. Yeah, go build mining stations there. Well, now let's, never mind. Finish where you're at first. I keep forgetting that there's two unused here. So never mind. Go just cancel what you're doing. Stop this order. Stop. Stop what you're doing and do this instead. We are getting to the point where our mineral income is now so high we may be able to start doing the just develop an entire tile all at once 
We also want to have somebody start working on Karagas over here as well. And now maybe... See, now I'm getting tempted to the point of maybe it's time to build another construction ship. But what are we going to do with those construction ship once all of the... Then we're just waiting for more planets to fall within our field of influence. And our field of influence, unfortunately, is looks like going to have to go through... These guys got four planets already? Damn. That's more than us. Although we could up our game. Isn't there an uncolonized planet? Yeah, there is an uncolonized planet here on Alpha Centauri. We could up we could up our game a little bit by just building a colony ship. Do we want to do that? Do we want to build a colony ship? I think we do. But first, go to the spaceport. I want to I'm, I'm maxing the clam crushers. Give me one more and then one more after that. I want the maximum number of clam crushers. And now we're just waiting for February 1st. That's it. The invasion. The day before Groundhog Day. These people are going to wish they had stayed in their hole and not come out to see their shadow pointlessly. Be like, man, I don't, I don't, we should have, we should have just stayed in the hole. Should have stayed in the hole. The Petarians would never have showed up and destroyed everything that we hold dear. All of our way of life, our entire civilization, they never would have annihilated us. So I'm thinking we invade. How do we do that? Transfer ships. How do we, how do we just invade this though? Land armies cost 30 influence. Let's do that then. We probably, oh, I guess, can we give armies a leader? I mean, I guarantee armies have, like, generals. That's got to be a thing. So we're landing our armies? Is that what we're doing? Ships? Are you Are you landing? Should be landing the armies, though. Oh, there they are. There, there they go. That's it. We got six men going down in the planet and drop paused. Right here on this planet right now. Dizzy, Rico, Roughjack. Uh, Ace and all the other starship troopers have just landed. Oh, this is it. This is it. This is our invasion. Yeah, the Stevador, I'm glad. Okay, you know what, Stevador? Fine. Hold on a second. We'll come look at you. Be like, hey, I need something to do over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need something to do over here. I got that damn ground invasion going on, and you're pulling my attention away from it, you jerk. I'd really like to get this engineering engineer research too. Um, I don't want to build an outpost for just one when we could go to Rothier and get way more out of it. All right, Stevador, um, go build a research station. That's fine. Now back to the invasion. We gotta watch this in real time. We got the whole CNN real time invasion thing going on. Oh, we're kicking shit out of them though. We're taking a little damage ourselves. We can retreat in two days. We're not retreating. Look at this. We're taking minimal losses and we're destroying the shit out of these guys. We do have an idle science ship. Once again, my attention is getting called away from the invasion so I can go deal with some trivial matter. Did you survey this system? Is it empty? What a toilet. This planet literally has nothing, really. It has absolutely, there's nothing on that planet at all. Unbelievable. We found a, an empty solar system. Okay, well. Oh, did we not ever finish surveying this? Barren world? Toxic world? No, we finished it. It's just orbiting around a neutron star. Well... Woo has nothing to do. Woo has nothing to do. We're full surveyed. Other than the other than this planet, which is currently being surveyed, everything else is covered. So I think we got to bring Woo home and have her assist with research. There's your new gig, Woo. Welcome. You know what? You've done a good job, Woo. You're entitled to a vacation here. I, I think you've earned it. Little uh, much needed R and R back at Earth. Why does it still say you're going to Shiat, though? I mean, it shouldn't. All right, hold on a second. Stuff's a happening. We're a doing things. Xenos are no match for us. Of course they're no match for us. Our armies have successfully invaded and subdued the primitive forces on... Let's pause the game because it's still running. Our armies have successfully invaded and subdued the primitive forces on Varnia. The locals have given up all attempts of fighting back and have now submitted their civilization into our empire. Although backward as they are... It may take some time for natives to become fully productive members of Petarian society. The Xenos are no match for us. 
Yeah, we have successfully invaded Varnia, but you know what? It's not really going to take much time for them to become successful citizens of the Petarian Empire, because I got a plan for them. We do need a governor. Actually, we, what we don't need a, is a governor. What we need is a sector. Invasion over. Beautiful. Okay, dismiss that. System surveyed. Yes, yes. Too many colonized. That's actually the one I want to look at. So what's the penalty here? We lose 10% influence and 10% energy. That sucks. So we're going to need to create a sector. We, we, we got to do it. I don't want these squishy idiots. But we do need them in our empire for a minute because there are some changes I want to make to the planet. So let's go to Varnia. Go to the surface. What we're going to need to do, we automatically enslave them all. Oh, it's so beautiful. It, it, it's fantastic. I, I love that you automatically enslaved all of the people. So, policies. Yeah, we want to make our slaves not able to breed anymore. So how do we do that? Do I want to move my capital to Varnia? No, that's just insane. Hey, remember that dump planet that you just passed? You want to put your, you know, put your capital there? Re-education campaigns. But the ignorance of a failure lasts 10 years. It makes them move to our ethics. We don't care about our ethics. Land of opportunity. Capacity overload infrastructure projects. Purity laws. The fanatic xenophobe effect ensures the purity area species in your empire through the enforcement of rigid separation laws. So what does this do? Unity output. It gives us 10% extra unity. I don't care about that. What I want to do is make it so that the slaves are not allowed to breed. Like, I don't want slave populations making more slaves. And I know there's a way you can do that. Planets and sectors, policies, edicts, species. You know what? That's something I'll, I'll figure it out in between episodes. There's no reason you guys need to sit and watch me do this. Also, episode's pretty much done anyway. Successfully colonized the world. So we're going to build a sector. We're going to outlaw reproduction amongst the slaves so that we get no more slave pops. And the other thing we're going to do, which, you know what? We'll just do that right now. We are going to move a population from Earth. We're going to relocate one of them to Varnia because somebody has to be in charge over there. We can't just have them run and ramp it. Who's it going to be is the question. Who's it going to be? I think we can probably afford to give up three minerals. Is this a, that population still growing? So you know what? What if we unenslave you? What if, what if I set your rights and make you not a slave anymore? Can I do that? I want to I make you... Okay. Well, that's something else we're going to have to figure out. I want to promote this guy from slave and make him the overseer of a new world. You work hard as a slave in the Petarian Empire. I got to prove to the people that the Petarian dream is real. You can rise above your caste. You can achieve a new station. It's not necessarily a lifetime of servitude. When we go conquer some other people to put into a lifetime of servitude, you get the benefit of their lifetime of servitude. It's the dream of every slave. The hope that keeps them from rising up, rebelling, and overthrowing a corrupt system. It's the Hunger Games. That's what we're doing here. If you want to see the rest of those Hunger Games, you know, might consider subscribing because uh, we're, we're going to do it. And if you enjoy this episode, might also consider dropping a like down in the comment section. I do really appreciate the support. Right now, though, thanks very much for watching. I'm going to do a little off-camera fiddling so you don't have to watch me tinker with the UI. I'll see you again soon.